Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to part 2 of Extra Utilities 2's Mod Spotlight. A um, bunch more items to cover today, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, today we're going to cover some of the item transfer stuff, some of the liquid storage stuff, some of the mechanical users and some of the things they can do, um, and probably chunk loading and a few other neat things. So, let's get started. Everybody who plays modded Minecraft runs into the point, if they're not voiding it, where you have too much cobblestone. And that is where compressed cobblestone comes in. This stuff can compress all the way up from double to triple, to quadruple, to quintuple, to sextuple, to septuple, to octuple compressed cobblestone, which is a lot of blocks of cobblestone. Um, basically a neat little way to store cobble. And uh, you know, you can also use the compressed to craft yourself the deep dark portal, you use the compressed for some of the stone spikes and a few other nifty things. So. Just something to be aware of. Uh, it's not the only compressed block, by the way. Um, a lot of blocks, like dirt and netherrack and sand, have compressed versions as well. A block that is after my heart is the redstone lantern. This is an amazing block. It's super cool. Uh, simply right-click on the block to set the redstone signal that's going to be output from it. That's it. For the longest time, I've been asking for a block like this, and somebody finally made it. Um, so, super easy. I want a redstone signal 9. I'm getting a redstone signal 9. 13. Boom. Pretty cool. I like it. By the way, you can also shift right click to go backwards and right click to go forwards. And it totally works with comparators. On the topic of automated redstone, we've got the redstone clock. Every second, it pulses a full strength redstone signal. Cool. Nice little timer that's compressed down to one block space that's not super laggy on your system. A super useful tool that existed in Extra Utilities and once again exists in Extra Utilities 2 is the sound muffler. There's lots of things in Minecraft that make a lot of noise, and the sound muffler helps. In a small area, it'll prevent sounds from occurring. Simply place it in the world, and it muffles all nearby sounds. If you listen closely, you can still hear the cows. Neat. Next up is a super cool contraction called the player chest. The player chest can directly interact with the player. The player's inventory, that is. Um, Pretty cool. You can access um, any slot in your inventory, including your armor slots, and you can specify what type of access is available. So for example, um, if I wanted these bottom slots here to have full access, I would just click on them. And then whenever items are piped in via an item hopper, you'll notice that it goes into the first of those slots. Sweet. How cool is that? Liking it, right? Um, so that's what the player chest does. You can also specify for extract only access, meaning that you can extract from those slots, but not insert. And the inverse is insert only, meaning you can pipe items in, but not pipe them out. This will work with any kind of inventory system. So under IO conduits, vanilla hoppers, you name it. And on the topic of automation, let's talk about the mechanical user, the scanner, the mechanical miner, and the mechanical crafter, all super useful blocks. The mechanical miner is a machine that does exactly like it sounds. It's going to break any blocks in front of it. Yoink! And suck them into its internal inventory. You can specify it to always be on, with a redstone signal it's on, with a redstone signal it's off it's running, or on a redstone pulse, meaning each pulse equals one in iteration of the machine running. Um, a lot of machines have this feature, so a demonstration of the difference between those. With redstone on, for example, As long as the lever's on, the machine's running. With redstone pulse mode, each pulse of a redstone signal means the machine runs once. You can also throw some, some speed upgrades in there if you want this to run a little bit quicker. Really nice for, um, see, definitely a speed difference. Really nice for cobble gens early game. And then finally, there's an enchanted book slot. You can place things in there to give enchants. So for example, Fortune 3 will give you a better chance at applying fortune. Nice, seven pieces of redstone, awesome. Or you can throw self-touch in there to do exactly what you would expect it would do. The mechanical user is the opposite of the block, but it has way more options to it. So first off, you've still got the speed upgrades and the same redstone settings that you can apply. What this block does is it right clicks or left clicks blocks from its internal inventory, but it can right click in different ways and you can specify exactly how you want the right click functionality to be interpreted, which is really powerful for those advanced users of Minecraft that know the differences. So you can go through generic click, place block, use item on block, activate block with item, 
use item, entity, generic click. Let's check out a couple examples of these. So one of the obvious ones would be place block. It places a block. Nobody's surprised about that, right? Nope, straightforward. However, what if we have the runic altar from Batania? We want to place an item on that block. Simply uh, doing the place block feature isn't going to work. Nope. So what we're going to want to do then is use item on block. Ah, see, that's placing it on the other side. That's probably not what we want to do either. That's like shift clicking the block. I don't think that's what we want. How about activate block with item? Ah, now we're talking. Cool. And our other options are use item, uh, which would use the item like a player would. So for example, dimlets from RF tools, a mod spotlight we recently did. When you right click them, it gives you a bunch of items. You can do the same in here. What can entity be used for? Right clicking on entities, no doubt. Sweet. When in doubt, Try a bunch of them and see which one works for the purpose that you want. Obviously, you can also left click things as well, so that if, for example, you put a sword in there, maybe on entity. Ouch! So like I said, play with the options. Eventually, one of those things should figure out what you want to do. You can also choose to do random slot, upper left slot only. Uh, those are pretty much the two options, it looks like. Next up is a super cool block called the scanner, which can emit a redstone signal based on certain conditions. So block detector, which is its current mode, um, select which properties are allowed, set current block, etc. So right now it's detecting if there's air in front of the block uh, scanner. Place a block there, there's no longer air there. Sweet. Uh, you can also set to the current block, so do that for example. Now it's looking for cobblestone. When there's not cobblestone there, it will not emit a redstone signal. Cool. Neat. So the scanner can detect what's in front of it. It can detect all kinds of cool stuff about a block if there's more information to gather. So for example, if you hit F3 and look at the right side of your screen on the very bottom, it says Minecraft Wheat Age Zero. Um, that's the information that it can gather for the scanner. So you can see right now, it's telling you which properties are allowed. Um, and it'll emit a redstone signal if there's any kind of wheat in front of it. However, maybe I only wanna get fully grown wheat. So I'll remove all the options except age seven. Now it's not emitting a redstone signal. And if we get ourselves a trusty watering can and we get this guy to grow, and maybe even throw some bone meal at it. You'll notice it's still not emitting a redstone signal uh, because it's currently at age six. The one in the brackets is the one that it's currently at. And if it's at age seven, it's emitting a redstone signal. It's currently at age seven. That's why it's seven is in brackets. Pretty cool, right? So you can specify which age level to emit a redstone signal at and uh, do so. There's literally a ton of different block detector states. Pretty much every block in the game will probably have some kind of state that you can read from it. Neat. You can get the facing side for some of the vanilla blocks and more advanced modded blocks will have even more advanced options for you. Uh, so for example, you can scan an extra utility solar panel to see whether or not it's currently active. And you can also check out what type of generator it is. Neat. Uh, you can also scan ender lilies to find out whether it's ready to grow and its current growth level. So basically, if you want to read information about a block, throw it in front of the scanner and see what kind of options are available. There's a lot. The Mechanical Crafter has a fancy little rendering option in front of it. Um, simply set a recipe, set the redstone control signal, and throw some of the recipe items in there. Should also be noted that can uh, pull from adjacent inventories, which is super useful. You can also uh, have a little bit of JEI integration here. So shift click and it'll auto populate your recipes. Next up, let's take a look at the item transfer system, which is back and has a couple new upgrades to it. So first off, you're going to want to make yourself a transfer node. This thing will allow you to transfer items out of chests. Boom. And then you place down some pipes. This configuration, as it extends right now, will go ahead and transfer items from this chest to that one. Sweet. Now it's a little bit slow in its current iteration. Every time it gets an item, it needs to find and pathfind down this line to figure out the nearest chest to drop it into. When it hits an intersection, it's gonna be a little bit random about it. And you can follow the pathfinding in the UI. So you can see it's going Z012, but sometimes it'll go down the X path. There it goes. 
and we can see that those items landed in this chest as opposed to this one. You can, if you want, get yourself the extra utilities wrench and right click on an intersection path to block it. This will prevent items from going down that path. This way the items should always land in the appropriate chest. You can also place speed upgrades in here to increase the speed of the path findings. And you can throw some stack upgrades in there to make it move stacks at a time. Quick. You can also uh, filter things using an item filter. So if you want to specify what's allowed to be extracted from a chest, you can just throw items in there, specify whether it's a whitelist or a blacklist type, ignore and match NBT, ignore and match metadata, and ignore and match the OR dictionary. Those who are familiar with using modded Minecraft should be familiar with all of these things, but just in case you're not, metadata typically is damage on tools. So if I put a sword in there and I told it to ignore metadata, any diamond sword would fit. If I tell it to match metadata, the diamond sword with the exact same durability as mine would be the only one that's allowed to pass. For NBT, it's enchanting. So basically enchanted items with the ignore or match. Cool. So if uh, we go ahead and throw this filter into here, we'll see now that cobblestone is listed on the filter. Uh, and it's also told to ignore metadata and other things. So if we throw cobblestone in there, it's allowed to be extracted. Wool, however, is not, nor are sticks. If we switch the filter to be blacklist, on cobblestone, then everything that's not cobblestone will be extracted from the chest. Neat. It should be noted that applying a redstone signal to a transfer node will prevent it from operating. And new to Extra Utilities 2 is the transfer filter. This item goes on the receiving end of the pipe and you can specify a filter here. So for example, we can say cobblestone's allowed to go in here, an unlimited amount, a single item, or a single stack. So if we put single item in there and we wrench this dude and toss our cobblestone filter in, you'll see all that cobblestone's gonna go this way. Uh, however, if we take out the stack upgrade and throw a stack in there, and make sure your whitelist is uh, set to whitelist, not blacklist. It'll filter to the point where one piece of cobblestone is allowed in this chest, and all the rest goes over here. You can do the same thing for single stack. And it'll keep at most one stack in here. Remember, the pathfinding is a little bit random, so keep that in mind. But eventually the most it'll allow in here is a single stack and no more. All the excess spills over here. If you'd like to extend the amount of filters that you can do, filters can be put inside filters so that you can have a bunch of different filters all within one. So each filter has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots. You can put nine filters in here, each with nine slots, and you can filter on 81 different item types. Pretty cool. The option to create a cobblestone generator still exists. Um, and you're still going to need to create an upgrade. That would be upgrade mining. This allows mining of cobblestone and pumping of water. Max upgrades, one. So the most you can put in there is one. And it'll go ahead and mine cobblestone for you. If you want this to be faster, speed upgrades are your friend. Fluid transfer nodes are also an option. So if you would like to transfer fluids around in your world, you can do that with the same options that you're familiar with from previous versions of extra utilities. Uh, an infinite source block with a upgrade in mining will be able to suck water up out of the world. You can also throw speed upgrades in there if you wish, and you can transfer those into tanks. Extra utilities comes with its own tanks called a drum. Um, there's the creative drum, this guy, which is not fully implemented yet. And then the ones that are implemented are the iron drum and the reinforced large drum. Uh, these hold different varying amounts of liquid. The iron drum, for example, can be placed over here. And now it's being filled up with water. This holds 256 buckets worth of water. The drums can be broken and picked up and placed elsewhere in the world, and you can pipe liquids out of them in much the same way you're familiar with. But if you're not sure, you can go ahead and use the transfer node to pull the water out. Neat. It should also be noted that there is a fluid filter. So if you'd like to filter on fluids, it's pretty easy. Simply get a bucket of water or whatever you want to filter on and place it in there and you'll be good to go. 
Retrieval nodes work in uh, the opposite direction that transfer nodes do. So instead of pulling items out of this inventory and shoving them into any inventories that it can find nearby, the retrieval node will literally do the exact opposite. It will retrieve items from uh, remote inventories. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see it's getting cobblestone and sucking it in here. If we were to go ahead and throw some speed upgrades in, it'll eventually iterate through all the pipes, find all the cobblestone it can, and pull it in. Pretty neat. The same kind of thing exists for fluids. The trash can has made its way back. Pretty straightforward block. Any items that go in there are completely destroyed from the world. You can pipe items in and you can also insert a filter to make sure only specific items are allowed to be piped in. The indexer is a pretty cool block. Again, requires a little bit of power as does the indexer remote. Basically, it can see all the items connected to the adjacent inventories. Nice, so there's 32 cobble here, 32 here. The indexer can see all 64. Uh, if we throw some redstone in there, you'll see the redstone also going up. Nice. So it can find all the redstone. It can pretty much index all the inventories behind it. Um, you can go ahead and double click on something uh, or just a single click actually, and it'll pull out one of those items. Uh, I wanna say shift click, I'll pull all of them out. Neat. You can also place items in there. And um, if you want to extract them, you're going to want to put a transfer node on this block and set up the transfer mode like you would any other inventory. And it'll extract the items. Speed upgrades obviously applying. Also, there's some JEI integration here. So if you start typing, you see it'll filter all the types of uh, items in here with JEI. And if you look up a recipe, and shift click, it'll request exactly the number of items that you need to make that recipe if you have them all. Neat. It should be noted, by the way, that if you shift click the plus, it's going to go ahead and extract as many uh, options as it can. But a single plus should move uh, without holding shift, should move one set of items out. Builder's wands are back. Hooray. All you need this time is a little bit of magical wood and a gold ingot. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Builder's Wand should know that they will extend the build size. Neat. Super useful for building nice stuff. Um, Destruction Wands are also available. It should be noted with the Destruction Wand, the more blocks that you're breaking, the longer it'll take to break them. You can hold Shift to do an entire row and Control to do an entire column. And you can do the same with the Builder's Wand. Next up are screens. Pretty nifty little device. Um, not super useful or anything, but uh, they can do some cool stuff. So screens uh, allow you to display images from the internet in game, provided that you post them on Imager. So simply place an the image there and ta-da! Pretty fancy. Screens can also extend to have uh, multiple sizes. Super cool. There's also the chunk loading ward. Now for this, you're going to need a golden lasso with a villager who's under contract. Um, in order to get that, first you're going to need to get your golden lasso. Then you're going to need to get yourself a villager who accepts the contract you want to write him. So find a villager, shift right click. Cool. This one says that paper is evil. He's not a fan of this contract. Uh, so we're gonna have to find another villager who might be open to this. Grrr, he's not happy about it either. Thanks, but no thanks. Sure, why not? I mean, apart from, wait, no! Most villagers are not down with living inside of a chunk loading ward for the rest of their lives, but you may find one who's totally cool with it. Yeah, he'll sign it. Ta-da! So this guy is now a villager under contract. Pick him up with a golden lasso, and you can use him to craft the chunk loading ward. Sweet. The chunk loading ward will chunk load a 3x3 three three chunk area. That's all there is to it, and uh, it uses 8 of your GP power. Next up, we've got the quantum quarry. The quantum quarry uses RF power, not GP. Uh, you're going to need uh, six of these blocks, the quantum actuators, to go around your quarry and just build it like so. 
Two things it's going to need is it's uh, first off, you can open up the UI and see what the power is currently in there. Not bad. Um, the way it works is it creates a fake dimension that all players can access and it'll randomly mine it. So those of you who play on servers who hate the idea of generating, uh, you know, quarry worlds and then players go in there and it causes tick rate lag, you know, let's cut out the middleman. Let's just have a dimension that's fake that nobody can actually visit that this thing will simulate quarrying. Um, so let's get ourselves a chest to store items in. And let's get ourselves some power by way of a capacitor. It's already getting a little bit of power, uh, probably from this guy. Yep. Uh, but I want to have a lot more power going into it. Cool. So you can see it's currently mining. Sweet. Uh, you can set different settings like always on, redstone on, redstone off, etc. And then you can also throw enchanted books in there. So things like Silk Touch and Fortune. And then finally, you've got the filter. If present, the quarry will automatically destroy any items that do not match the filter. So don't put cobblestone in there because then it's going to destroy everything except cobblestone. Put things like your iron and gold and diamond and all that stuff that you want to get. So pretty much anything that you would want to quarry and that you would want to keep goes into the filter. Everything else gets voided. Pretty straightforward block. It's also going to mine certain biomes. So depending on the biome that you're in. So example, right now it's in a stone beach biome. But if it was in a desert biome, you'd get sand. And if it was in a forest biome, you might get wooden saplings. You'll get seeds from the grass. Pretty much anything that a normal quarry would pick up in a normal world. Because it's literally creating a fake dimension and then mining it. I say one of the best for last. It's the simplest block in the mod, I think. The angel block. Sweet. Uh, this is probably one of the blocks that made me first love this mod. It's uh, simply a block that you can place in the world without being placed on any other block. No other blocks can you place in Minecraft without having another block to place them on. The angel block is the exception. So if you're building in a void world or if you're building uh, way up high in the sky, if I wanted to build a base up here, I would literally have to pillar all the way up. Not with the angel block. Simply place it and you can start expanding from there. So cool. I also saved Cursed Earth. Aggressively spawns mobs when in darkness. Only fire can stop its spread. Neat. Um, so all you have to do is right click a piece of soil with a drop of evil. Remember those drops of evil that were dropped from wither skeletons? Yup. And that'll start spawning Cursed Earth. Now that I've got a nice dark area to demonstrate in here with. Sweet. Uh, we can simply right click this drop of evil and we get Cursed Earth. Awesome. Uh, now, if there's uh, lights on in here, so for example, glowstone, it'll prevent mobs from spawning. Uh, but as long as there's not glowstone in there, we should get mob spawns. And there they are. Nice. These mobs will last for about a minute before dying on their own, and uh, new mobs will spawn. So this is a great way to create a dark room that aggressively spawns mobs, and uh, pretty great stuff. Those of you who've used Curse Earth before know exactly what it's all about. Do be aware that uh, Cursed Earth will spread. If it's dark, got to be dark in order for it to spread. Um, and so you can get one piece of cursed earth and like it'll spread out to all the adjacent dirt, etc. And with that, guys, I think we were about wrapping up part two of the Extra Utilities 2 Mod Spotlight. For now, Daryl20 is signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this series and we'll be back with more Mod Spotlights in the future. All right, guys, take it easy.